Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome to the Eternal Blue Exploitation Guide. Alright, so again, this is uh, also another requested video that uh, was a long time in the making. I just didn't have time to completely cover it uh, and uh, some of you pointed that out. So I'm going to be following the video requests as they were posted and this was one of them. So uh, let me start off by saying uh, or let me start off by explaining what Eternal Blue is, uh, how the exploit works and uh, how it all came to be all right so let me just start off by saying uh the, the eternal blue exploit was developed by the nsa which uh, is the national security agency in the united states and essentially what happened or how it was released is that there was a f there were a few testimonies from uh, nsa employees and it was uh, leaked by the shadow brokers hacker group uh, if you remember on april 14th 2017 so it's around about uh, out for a year now and it was then utilized um, worldwide for the WannaCry uh, ransomware attack. So it was used to uh, to share the, the ransomware all around the world. All right. It was then also used to carry out the 2017 NotPetya cyber attack that took place, uh, you know, in June uh, 2017. And then was was used to uh, in a few banks to 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 spread trojans uh, around about uh, september all right so that's what the exploit is now talking about how it works it's really very simple to understand how it works is firstly it is uh, it's an exploit that is based or exploits microsoft all right message microsoft all right now what does it exploit well it exploits smb the smb protocol which is as you know is a server me message block that's what it stands for it's a server message block protocol and uh, the the exploit is denoted under the uh, the entry cve 2017-0144 and essentially what happens is the vulnerability exploits the smb version 1 which is uh, exists in various in the different v versions of windows and essentially what it does is it uh, mishandles the specially crafted uh, packets and uh, that, that are being sent from the remote hackers and essentially allowing this allows uh, the hackers to execute arbitrary code on the target computer all right so uh, we are here in Linux, and we're going to be using metasploit to exploit the eternal blue uh, vulnerability now uh, most of you guys might be asking can you tell us more about what uh, type of criteria it works under well essentially it's going to work with uh, with metasploit that's how you would perform the exploit and you can perform this on any linux computer running metasploit or uh, as many of you have pointed through the metasploit framework all right so when it comes down to uh, or what type of requirements you need is obviously you need the latest version of metasploit so hopefully you've updated the database you then need to have wine 32 bit installed and you need to have the 32 bit archite architecture installed on Kali Linux so that you can install uh, 32 bit pieces of software. All right, so make sure you have wine installed. Now, again, you might be asking what versions of Windows does it work on? Well, as far as I am concerned, it works on all the service packs on Windows 7. It works on both architectures, 32 bit and 64 bit. And furthermore, it works on Windows Server 2008. And I'm not too sure because I'm not 100% uh, confident that a lot of people are using Windows Server 2008. Uh, most people are using Linux servers. Uh, but the, the real danger of this attack comes uh, in, in, in the, in the, in the form of windows 7 and some of you might be thinking well how does that really work out i i don't use windows 7 so how does it how is it commonly used well uh the truth is most damage is done to organizations and most organizations that i know at least are running windows 7 so you can see the threat that this poses and again that's what was targeted during the ransomware attacks it was used to target organizations not individuals so usually what would happen is you'd connect to a network of computers and spread out the ransomware using the uh, eternal blue exploit which i'll show you how extremely easy it is to exploit now i'm running a windows 7 virtual machine it is i think the 32 bit uh sorry 64 bit service pack 3 so you can see it's working now again a lot of you guys are going to really bash me for not running a genuine version of, of windows but that's uh because i don't have the serial key uh, and I've already activated uh, my computer, my laptop, actually, that's running Windows 7. I used it as a media server. That being said, uh, it will not affect anything here. So as you can see, it's running uh, the the th uh, service pack 3. And if I just open up my command prompt and I type in ipconfig just to get the local IP address, 
you can see it's running on my local air network as 192.168.1.105 this exploit will work computers on computers outside your local network if you set up port forwarding by the way that's going to be the next video uh, coming right up because it was also a very highly requested video showing you how to set up port forwarding so you can perform attacks like this with metasploit and rats uh, remote access tools all right, so back into Kali Linux, and I have a few links opened up here. The links will be in the description. First and foremost, I have the Rapid7 uh, exploit, um, the, the exploit name and it's uh, in, in, its, in the database. Sorry about that. So as you can see, it falls under the exploit modules, uh, exploit windows, SMB, and the Microsoft uh, 1710 uh, eternal blue all right so you can just go ahead and read through what this does it essentially uses the buffer overflow it exploits the buffer overflow and we'll be looking at that in a few seconds but now what you will require is you will require the scanner the auxiliary scanner for this exploit i'll be posting the github repository down below and you will need the 11 parts eternal blue double pulsar metasploit uh, exploit that works exclusively um to exploit windows as you can see i have it on my desktop so what you want to do is you you don't need to clone this this is essentially the scanner that will test your target operating system to see whether it's vulnerable and i'll show you how to use it right now and then finally you have the exploit which you need to download and once you have downloaded make sure uh, just download it to your desktop first or uh, the recommended one is to download it to your root di your root directory where the metasploit folder lies. So once you've downloaded, copy the depths folder and the eternal blue dot ruby uh, exploit here and just copy them and you want to go into your root. So I'd recommend that you're in your root directory. So I'm going to go into my computer here and I want to go into my root and we're looking for the metasploit, uh, the metasploit folder here. And you then want to go into modules, exploits, windows, SMB, and you want to paste it in here as, as I've done. All right, now if these folders do not exist, you might want to connect your database, but if you still don't want to, to do that, you, you just need to create exploits, windows and, and the SMB folder and paste the, the depths and the eternal blue dub pulsar script here. All right, so once you've done that, you should be able to use this script. Now for the scanner, uh, well, you can essentially just close this, but before we get started, make sure that you have, um, let me just open up a new terminal here, make sure that you have updated your distribution. Uh, make sure that you've installed Wine 32-bit, so apt get install uh, Wine 32-bit, make sure you've installed Wine 32-bit, and then you want to uh, make sure that you can actually use Wine, sorry. So uh, to use Wine, what you would do is, if I just open up the help menu here, uh, whoops, uh, Wine uh, help, and uh, what you want to do is run the program Wine, uh, program and you would provide the arguments but for me I've not provided any arguments uh, and I've actually not used the correct syntax uh, so uh, essentially what you need to do is just run just run wine program to create the wine folder for you uh, if I just go to home and as you can see I have the wine folder here just make sure that this wine folder is created all right it's very important because uh, wine is very mandatory for this all right, so now we're going to go into the Metasploit framework. And remember, you need to have the IP, whether local or uh, or public IP address for your target. And uh, we are firstly going to use the scanner. All right, so the scanner is really very simple. All you need to do is, because it's an auxiliary, uh, you just need to go uh, here and it's an auxiliary scanner SMB. All right, so use, uh, oops, auxiliary, auxiliary scanner and we want to make sure it's auxiliary scanner smb and we select the uh, the name there so smb scanner smb and we give the name which is the um the smb uh, ms7 uh, ms1710 all right so i'm just going to copy that there and we're just going to paste that in there and i'm going to hit enter and as you can see it's going to give me the options and it's successfully showing me that i can use it let me just expand this and let me clear everything everything out so this is the scanner that will test your target to see whether it's vulnerable to the eternal blue exploit uh, so i'm just going to uh, show options if you remember the uh, metasploit syntax and as you can see the only thing you need to change is our hosts and the reason it's our host is because you can scan the entire network range uh, for example if you're trying to test the entire network for this vulnerability uh, so but in this case i'm only testing one computer so i'll say set our hosts 
uh, our hosts and my local IP for the target Windows 7 operating system is 192.168.1.105. Now, if you have set up port forwarding, uh, then you should post uh, the local IP here and the R port is 44, uh, the R port is 445. Uh, just in case you know that that is the default SMB port, as I'm sure most of you already know. Uh, if you want to provide a Windows domain to use for authentication, you can do, again, you can use a password and username if that's what you want as well. All right, so I'm just going to hit enter and I'm going to hit run or scan. Uh, oops, sorry, run, my bad. And it's going to run. And as you can see, host is likely vulnerable to uh, the, uh, the MS 1710. Uh, Windows 7. Oh, and it is running service pack one. Anyway, it's running the 32 bit and uh, there we are. So host is likely infected with double pulsar architecture 32 bit. So we do know that it is vulnerable. And now what we need to do is we now need to use the exploit. So you might be asking, how do we use the exploit? Well, it's really very simple. Remember, we saved it in our exploits folder under the Metasploit uh, the Metasploit folder. So Metasploit, by the way, if you can't find these files, make sure you have enabled show hidden files, or you can do it with, through your terminal or using the Nautilus launcher. So Metasploit modules exploits. So it's in the exploits. So we say use uh, exploits, uh, use exploits windows uh, SMB, use exploits windows SMB. Uh, and we want to select the eternal blue double pulsar. All right. So eternal blue underscore double pulsar and once that is done hit enter and as you can see it should accept it that's if you have saved it to your local directory there we are so now we should all be good and now we just need to set our settings or our options so options and uh, let me just expand that so we can see what we need to set so let me just do that again because uh, i just want to make sure you can see everything all right so uh, the things you need to confirm are that it's got the double pulsar route kept correctly uh, the directory, sorry. Uh, so this make sure it's, it belongs or it lies in the root folder under the eternal blue double pulsar metasploit folder. All right. So as you can see, all of these uh, settings are required. And uh, by default, most of them have been set for you. The only thing we need to set is the R host here and the process inject, which we're going to change to the Windows Explorer.exe. All right, uh, that's because uh, we, once we exploit that, it's going to create a reverse metaprinter shell that will give us a reverse access, uh, um, a shell uh, or reverse access as I've just mentioned, as I've just mentioned, pardon me. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our R host, uh, which is the, the target IP 192.168.1.105, and we hit enter. Uh, we then want to set the process inject, which is set process inject. Uh, process inject and we're going to change that to explorer.exe. I'm pretty sure you know what explorer.exe is if you have been using Windows for a long time. I'm going to set enter. You can set it to whatever process injection you want to, but this is the one that will work. Uh, you then want to change your target architecture if that's what you want as well. Now, I'm not sure what mine is because it gave me a few weird changes here. So it is running uh, the 32 bit, uh, the service pack one properties and um, yeah it is 32 bits so we leave it as default and um, what we need to set now is um, if make sure that your wine path is set to the root wine and the drive C that's very important and I think that's all the options so let me just check the options here and as you can see if you look at the ID here it's going to tell you Windows 7 all service packs uh, either 32 bit or 64 bit so it doesn't matter what service pack you're using it should work so now i'm just going to hit uh, run and hopefully it exploits it for us and gives us the reverse shell all right so i'm going to hit run and give it a few seconds it should uh, show you some results uh, directly there we are generating the payload dll launching eternal blue backdoor is already installed and the metaprinter session one is open and there we are we have the metaprinter session and uh, there you are you have successfully uh you have successfully updated whoops i actually should have launched the uh i should have actually uh, given my comments directly anyway that being said i'll actually show you that it it does uh, actually work so what i was talking about is you can imagine the potential damage that this can cause on an enterprise level for example you know hacking a company on Wi-Fi or on LAN, if you just have access to the to the network, I'm talking. And you know, I, and this is not uh, only applies to businesses, but imagine if you were to do this on your college network. Not that I am encouraging that. In fact, I'm going to pass out the disclaimer right now that I am not going to be held responsible for any of the damage that that, that you know can, can be done. Um, so I've heard many stories of students 
hacking into their school network and copying the you know the exam papers and that stuff and you can definitely do it and for those of you who are still skeptical as to how this attack is uh how this attack is so bad well i can just show you something here if you know the meterpreter uh, commands you know that you can run the ls command here and that will display all the files in the directory and we're inside the windows directory so i'm just going to go back a few directories and we should be able to see yeah there we are we're in program we're in the c drive right now and we can change into users and you can go to the desktop users documents you can explore the entire drive you can delete files you can uh, download files from uh, there into your into your working directory and uh, i'm pretty sure you know to download files it's really very simple you just need to hit download uh, i'll be i'll be making a video on how to use the interpreter if you guys are not to show um, so meanwhile, we can just say download, uh, but first let me just explore the users because I haven't used this virtual machine anyway. Uh, so CD users, oops, users, and we can list the files in there. So CD Alexis, uh, so there we are, CD Alexis. And we list the files in there. We can see that we have, uh, let's go into the desktop. So CD Alexis desktop, list the files in there. Nothing really, desktop.ini. So you can just hit download. And uh, once you hit download, remember to specify the, the, the C drive and then, uh, sorry, that's backslash, uh, backslash. And then you select your users. Uh, so for example, users, and you can then select your users, Alexis, um, desktop and then again desktop.ini desktop.ini and still i can't get through it but anyway as i said it's probably going to uh, be uh, the reason because we have launched this from the explorer.exe directory which lies in the system 32 so you probably have to launch the you probably have to select the directory from that directory being the root directory all right that being said you can see that uh, you can go ahead and change the files you want to edit you can execute aexe files if you want to on that computer and by default you can see if we just launch the windows 7 operating system that is currently working just fine so there you have it guys for those of you asking for the eternal blue exploit here it is i'll be posting all the links in the description and it's really very very simple uh very simple procedure for exploiting a system and uh, yeah, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or you can post a question on my website. I hope you found value in this video. If you did, please leave a like down below. That will be really appreciated. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.